Aloha and welcome to Holistic Wellness Revealed. I'm Letitia Sharp and I'm your host today as we talk about ourselves being the medicine that we are seeking in our lives. Today, I feel super blessed to have Tara Ann on as our guest. She's a wellness coach. She does leadership and life coaching, and she also is a metabolic therapy specialist. So let's welcome Tara Ann. Mahalo nui, Tish. It's an honor to be here with you and the audience. Aloha, Tara. So um, as I was feeling into this, today and over the last couple of weeks and how we are the medicine. I mean, that can actually look a couple of different ways. Uh, what are your thoughts on it? Well, I appreciate you bringing this up. You know, what a powerful um, topic to consider how we engage with our challenges throughout life, whether that's um, a physical ailment, like, like a broken bone or a, a chronic illness that, is, that forces us to shift our lifestyles so that we can take best care of ourselves. And I hold this uh, close to my heart because about seven years ago, I had um, an experience medically that forced me to stop and take a look at everything in my life. Mm-hmm. I was building my dream on the big island where it was 40 acres and we built a retreat center and people were coming to stay and um, there was community and wellness and, you know, and I was working 90, 100 hours a week. I was in the permitting process. There was so much to to grounding this vision. And I started having, I was carrying so much stress, but I wasn't paying attention to it. You know, I grew up in a household where, you know, when when life doesn't make sense, put your head down and work harder. That will, will produce some results. And that has served me very much in my life. However, you know, back in 2016, when I had a grand mal seizure while I was sleeping. And the next day when I went and had all the tests done um, and the doctors told me, Tara, you just need to do more of that yoga you talk about. Mm-hmm. I felt humbled. And that was a moment I knew that the medicine was within me. So you knew that at that point that you needed to find a way to use this for your betterment of your soul journey here physically. In essence, that's what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. And you know, it, it, it wasn't it wasn't perfect by any means. You know, six months later, all right, actually, let me back up because I had revised my schedule, brought more, you know, um, self-care into, into the routine. Yet six months later, I kind of found myself back into that overdrive um, habit that I had built. So it wasn't perfect. And I had another seizure. And that was then when the doctors said, well, now there's a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And here's some medication I want you to take for the rest of your life. And I said, but doc, look at in this medication. It like has, you know, very, you know, lots of side effects and it like works, you know, half of the time, like, you know, there's got to be something else. And it took some time, but finally there was a doctor that said, well, Tara, there's a diet. There's a diet that was started in the 1920s and it was particularly developed for epilepsy and seizure control, but it's really hard. It's really hard. And I said, doc, I don't think you've met me, you know, let me at them, you know, give me, give me a challenge. And so I went on the path of an elimination protocol and it wasn't easy and it took, it took a lot to find my way. And I continue to adjust it because there isn't like one thing that sticks forever. However, I'm happy to say that I'm over two and a half years seizure free and I'm medication free too. So I have been able to find the medicine within and it's a lot of you know, sure, schedule and such, but the, it's more 
around where am I willing to say no? Where am I willing to put up some healthy boundaries so that I can say yes more to me? Mm -hmm. And how can I structure my life so that, yes, there's powerful contribution and service, but there's also space for freedom, fun, and plenty of time with loved ones. So that's my work these days. And I bring this not only to um, my coaching clients and one-on-one arenas, but also I go into corporations and organizations where they're now seeing that mental health, mental well-being is a very big part of, of how we're experiencing life and what kind of ailments we're dealing with. So it's, it's my honor to serve in these ways, to tune in to the medicine within. So would you say, so what would you say was the actual, I, okay, let me back it up. First of all, how did you deal with the fear? Because there had to be a certain amount of fear when you first had that seizure. I mean, how how did you deal with that? Where did you find the resource to be able to get back to your calm, to look for the medicine? Because it's not, I mean, it's easy to say, oh yeah, we're the medicine we see. (laughs) You know, it's just, it's this. La la stuff on the outside. And I mean, there's some serious inner journeying that has to happen in order for you to find that stability and find that medicine. What what did that look like for you? Mm. Well, thanks for asking. That's a really great question because you're right. You know, the initial shock and surprise, the 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 disillusion, if you will, um, was a lot to sort through too. And as you say, you know, the fear. And what I've, what I've come to know about fear is that there are three faces of fear. Fear of the unknown, fear of judgment, or fear of failure. And I'd have to say all three of those were present for me, but most was the fear of the unknown. I just, I had no idea. There was nobody in my family that had dealt with seizures. There was nobody in my life that had... Um, been dealing with this. So there was a lot around uncertainty. And, you know, post post seizure, what I've learned is sometimes it takes a few days up to a couple weeks to begin to feel like myself again. Mm -hmm. Right. And I've come to know, like, you know, this is the element that I've been working with, but how many of us, when we are, I don't like to say, like, when there's a flare, when there's a flare of the condition that we're dealing with, it usually doesn't happen overnight. It's almost like there's a buildup to it. So I had to get honest with myself and build a team around me. So I had, you know, I hired a coach. I found mentors that were supportive in the, not only in the epilepsy space, but in the, in, you know, in the workplace space. And you know, and in, in support with family. So much of it had to do with slowing down and then sorting out the overwhelm, right? There was just too much on my plate. I was, you know, attempting to handle more than was my share. And my body was letting me know that I was ignoring its beautiful signs. So I'd have to say first and foremost was slowing down, slowing down, clearing out the debris, writing down all of the overwhelm. You know, this brain, this beautiful brain, it's not, it's not meant to be a storage device, right? So the first step is to write everything down that I think that I'm responsible for or that I'm in control over, just all of the overwhelm. And then went going through this list and crossing out one by one that which is out of my control. Mm -hmm. Then identifying what is in my control and then prioritizing and even categorizing and then taking, making an action plan for what is in my control. This is what the brain is designed to do. Yeah, a a mentor of mine um, always says about overwhelm, uh, he says, 
when you feel like you're doing too much, do less. Yeah. Simple, right? <laughs> And I've used that over the years to be able to really check myself because I'm I'm an overachiever also, <laughs> a little extra. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And so what would you say was, I mean, I hear this a lot too. Like I also work with a lot of people who have different say acute issues and also people who have longer term issues. And I can't tell you how many times I've worked with cancer patients who have said that was the best thing that ever happened to me. Wow. And it's because they moved to the other side. What would you say? And, and I really feel like it's because they used it as a medicine rather than something that needed medicine. Um, so what would you say was the biggest thing that you, that you received and that you gained from this experience of seizures? Because the way I'm looking at it is that the seizures and the epilepsy is actually the medicine and mm -hmm. that's coming from inside of you. And how is that curing all of these outside things in your life? I know you mentioned slow down. But is there something else? Mm. Good work. Yeah, great question, Tish, because I very much resonate with what you were saying around um, your, your, your clients that have been ca cancer patients and have said, you know, this was the best thing that's ever happened to me. Um, I, too, have, have worked with um, particularly women that uh, deal with breast cancer. And how many of them will say, like, I was overgiving. I was overgiving. And and that, you know, because the giving comes from the heart, but then the breast cancer too. It's like, where are we giving outside of ourselves and 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 not giving from a cup that's overflowing? Right. And so I heard you say something earlier around like, oh, I'm an overachiever too. And one thing I had to look at was like, where, where does my Where's the overachiever actually insecure and taking on too much and, you know, over, over giving over, I'd say for me, it was over responsibility, taking on more than I was capable for. And a beautiful piece that has been um, medicine for me, because about a year later, the relationship ended the, the dream of, you know, um, creating this, this wellness center where the world could come and renew, you know, that dream needed to be put to rest. Now, I feel so good that it's still there on the big island east side. You know, it's, it's still, my baby's still going. And it may look different than back when I was, you know, developing it. However, a big piece of my medicine, my puzzle was that I can contribute and I can serve powerfully and it doesn't have to be in service to the whole world. I can serve powerfully with the people that are right in front of me. I can serve locally and I can make a difference and contribute in meaningful ways. Yeah. That has been a big, big piece for me. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, that goes to touch on the whole separation, right? Because when we sit there and feel like, oh, I'm trying to serve the whole world, or I want this to be a global action and um, things of that nature, really, it has a feeling of something being outside of ourselves, right? It's not actually within ourselves there's a bit of a separation like oh i have to reach people on the other side of the world because they're different from the people right here they're different from me right here which is where it ultimately starts and where it started with you in your story so in your story it started with you and you let go of the global and you brought it back to what is right in front of you which i i just absolutely love that I, I love, 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 love that. Because <laughs> separation is really harmful, right? That's just as harmful as the fear. 
when I came over here to Oahu, here I was, a new girl in a big city, and realized quickly that hmm, what I was doing there doesn't necessarily translate perfectly here. So it's been it's been a um, what I refer to as like a beautiful acclimation of learning and earning my way um, on this beautiful island too. I'm here in Honolulu in the beautiful valley of Manoa. And it's this island um, with her um, complexities and populations and just the density of people. Like I don't run out of inspiration to show up and be of service. There's plenty to, to, to be and to, to contribute to. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yep. This is Definitely a place of being able to gather and share, <laughs> for sure. When we were um, when we were having a little chat a few days ago, you brought up a super interesting um, point, and that point to me, I feel like we really need to bring to the viewers because it's been said a million times over, and how to be able to find ownership for what's happening in your life. So when we find that ownership, really, what is the process of that? I know since you, this is your forte, let's, I'd love to hear how you explain that. Wonderful. Thank you so much. You know, it's, it's a big deal. And, and I have uh, to take a look at like, where are we taking ownership in our lives and where are we showing up as a victim? And, you know, it can sound daunting, um, but any of those places, you know, for instance, when I was talking about earlier, like where on my list of overwhelm was I taking on more than I'm even built for, right? And so that can lend itself to my victim mentality, right? So really getting clear on what's in my control and what's out of my control. But one, one piece that is also quite important is, you know, the idea that the issue isn't the issue. How we're being with the issue is the issue. And said one other way, how we're being with ourselves with the issue is the issue. Mm. And so that can translate to, are we... Are we, you know, sitting in our pity party and, you know, just, you know, how long do we give ourselves to stay there? Because yes, you know, there are feelings of sadness and shock and overwhelm. Be there. And at what point do we get back up and stand in ourselves and begin again? You know, if we're continuing to beat the drum of I'm not enough you know, poor me, woe is me, we're going to create more of the same, you know, and it may, you know, the, the old adage of, you know, energy flows where attention goes. And so in these, um, you know, diagnoses or, or, you know, issues that can, can seem overwhelming, it's like, how do we, how do we get honest with ourselves and begin to Take action where we can. Yeah. And, 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 you know, that's, you know, a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. Over time makes change. So I feel so blessed to share this here today, but also slowing down with, um, with others to support their process. Because it often can be overwhelming to do on our own. Yeah. Absolutely. And I mean, a, a really good point. I love how you said um, the, what did you say about the better question was how you are with yourself yeah. through it. And really that's, that's what helps us show up outside of ourselves, right? So when we figure out, okay, what has harmed us? another great mentor of mine, what harms you? And I really had to dig deep. And this is not like light stuff, people. This is, oh, crap, you got to get honest, you know, with yourself first. And um, that was another point that you brought up is you have to get honest with yourself. And so I can tell you right now the things that harm me and I'm happy sharing them 
because I'll, I'll go first, pick me. So yeah, what is it? Oh gosh, separation. First of all, thinking that I am separate from anyone, self-doubt, self-doubt has harmed me immensely in um, so many things. In fact, could have even harmed me this morning because I was starting to doubt the fact that I was going to be able to bring this potent message to people. And then I had a really good friend of mine just say, girl, get over yourself. Just be yourself. That is a medicine, silly. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. And that's me reminding myself that I've surrounded myself with these friends. And the other one that is huge for me that has harmed me is comparison. Is comparing myself to other people, other outcomes, other anything outside of me. And that helps me to find my inner wisdom. And I feel like that can help other people to find their inner wisdom and find this new point of view that whatever is your experience in life is not happening to you. Mm. You are the person. You are the driver. It's your essence trying to speak through you so that you can continue this journey of experiencing yourself more fully in this lifetime. A thousand percent. And, you know, and to take that piece one one step further is it's, you know, the the example you shared earlier with some of the um, cancer patients that said, this is the best thing that's ever happened for me. Mm -hmm. you know, rather than, you know, taking a look at something as, oh, it's happening to me, it's happening for me. That is a perfect example of the difference between victim and ownership mentality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, even I just had COVID for the second time a couple of weeks ago, or no, gosh, a few months ago. Mm -hmm. And um, I really felt a shift with that COVID. I had worked the first time I got COVID, I worked through the shame of maybe not being such a great healing person because how could I let my vibration drop enough to be able to get COVID <laughs> or anything like that, right? And then this one, I really used it in to get out of that thinking brain and allowing that sense of guidance, that heavenly guidance, that essence to come through that inner wisdom, like you said. Similarly, you know, earlier you were talking about, you know, self-doubt and, you know, as, uh, as I have to own that insecure part of me that can be the overachiever, I really like to produce and achieve. It feels really good. And I have to catch myself. Am I doing it for something outside of myself? Am I doing it for accolades or to be seen as valuable? Or is it, is it true um, excellence moving through me, Right. And, and so, you know, taking a look at what are our motives and are they true um, or, or not? Right. And that's it. Living in that truth. And it's not just something that people say to sound smart and new age. It's really take a look at what is your truth. And I love how you said that. Yeah. You've got to figure out what are your motives. Mm -hmm. And uh, that takes me to a point of, you know, we uh, we have always talked about all of the ways of healing here on this show. And so it's, okay, mental, physical, emotional, spiritual, and you work on all those levels. I would say the physical part, you've got a great, um, a great, is it a podcast? Trust your gut? What is that? Oh, that was a live a live event I was doing on the on YouTube. We definitely created a YouTube channel during the pandemic, and we're doing weekly um, wellness gut checks. Uh, and then also, you know, I have a, a library of of classical yoga practices, yoga for everybody, as well as I love um, chair yoga. I love to bring wellness and presence to people that might be uh, motion restricted. Or, um, you know, yeah, have some, you know, have a hard time getting down on the floor. We can do plenty from the chair. And so I shared those here. And then I'd also love to just share that if, you know, especially for this show, I'm willing to open up this October and have two complimentary deep dive 
conversations with the listeners here. So if anybody would like to send me an email that hears this, send me an email, aloha at terraann.com, T-E-R-R-A-A-N-N.com. And we'll get a complimentary deep dive session in service to you. Oh my goodness. I know so many people who need that and are going to jump. What a generous, I'm (laughs) touched. Thank you so much, Tara Ann. I'm a little bit, I don't have words. That's such a generous offer. That's great. And also I know that if anyone has a business or a corporation or anything like that, you do great. It's, it goes beyond team building, right? The team building is kind of the result that happens with the coaching that you're doing with the company. So if anybody is looking for something like that, Tara Ann is a great resource as well. Absolutely. Um, Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm really enjoying, uh, you know, like I said, like organizations are now seeing the value in support in this way. So um, there's some teams that I lead monthly mindset sessions for, um, quarterly one-on-ones for for the team so they can get customized um, coaching support in their lives because companies now see, you know, with with, um, health insurance costs going up and people having to deal with these chronic illnesses so much the value of empowering the individual to take the control of their life and their health and their, their mental well-being too. So it's, it's, it's a holistic um, effort and it's super fun to see how um, corporations and, and leadership in, in companies are, are taking a stand for well-being. Yeah, that's such an um, important part of growth. And so to have that kind of growth in a business really ensures the success, right? So that I would encourage everyone to do that. And so we touched a little bit on mental so we can get our mindset taken care of. We can get our priorities in order. We touched on um, the emotional part, how we feel about it, our fears maybe, how we move through those and and maybe even... um, feel where the source of that is coming from so that we can, so that we can deal with it a little bit easier. And then the spiritual aspect of taking that deeper dive and really going within and finding out maybe what is that sole purpose that's wanting to find its way and express itself through us. And of course, the physical part with the metabolic um, treatments and therapy and also finding out how to trust our guts and things of that nature. So I just love how holistic meaning, in the meaning of holistic meaning, body, mind, spirit, emotions, and all of those things being equal and having just as much attention as the other part of us and finding balance there. Tara Ann, thank you so much for coming on today and just sharing and sharing and being vulnerable and open and um, talking to us about your story and and everything. It's really been a gift. Oh, you are so welcome, Tish. I honor the space that you've created to bring people together and and, um, have authentic conversations about um, empowerment and what is possible when we really get present and, and tune into ourselves. Mahalo Nui. Mahalo. Mahalo. And to Think Tech Hawaii, thank you so much for this platform that you've provided and to our donors and our sponsors for keeping us on the air and letting us have these conversations out in the open. Until next time. Aloha.